So one of the cool things about Mr. Tackle Box is that there's really no subscription contract. You can stop anytime. You can switch up boxes from month to month. For a while I was doing the trout and panfish box. Just moved to the mountains of North Georgia, so I'm really stoked about doing some of that stuff. But for the purposes of spray sessions, I've been doing Mystery Tackle Box repaints for about three years now. And we're gonna see what we've got. We've got a banger. Cool. So a few days ago, I posted a poll where you could vote in my community area on the page here on YouTube what you wanted to see for the spray session. Two different things happened. The Facebook crowd, they all want to see another bull shad, which is awesome, and I'm absolutely going to do that. But you guys wanted to see, overwhelmingly here on YouTube, a Basics for Beginners spray session. So this is not only, we're going to actually knock out three birds with one stone today. We are going to, I'm going to go with this Guggen Squad banger. We're going to open that up. Um, we are going to give you guys a beginner spray session makeover. We're going to take off the hooks, leave in the eyes, we'll tape over the eyes, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So we're going to go start to finish on a mystery tackle box spray for beginner airbrushers. The first thing you guys want to do when you're repainting a brand name or somebody gives you something that they want repainted is to make sure all the hooks and the split rings are off. Pretty easy. Just grab a pair of split ring pliers. I would imagine by now you guys have those. If you don't have those, a lot of you guys ask where I get mine. I just use the old regular old Bass Pro Shops entry level. But one of the cool things about this particular pair of pliers is that this end over here, the hook or the pointed end, sticks out further than the latch end which gives me a pretty firm grasp on whatever it is that I'm doing. The next thing that we want to do is we want to tape over the eyes and we want to tape over that bill because you don't want to get paint on any of that and because they're taped down or they're sealed in pretty well on these baits. I'm just going to bring this over to the light. Grab a little pair of scissors here. and I'm going to make a little notch just a small one right there. Add that to where this little line tie splits the, uh, the difference. Now we're just going to cut And we're just going to give this a snip right here. Pull this tape back to the underside. And that makes a pretty decent seal unto itself. But on top of that, I'm going to add these two little pieces of tape back on that we just snipped off and corner this off. For the eyes themselves, I'm just going to make a little pull here on this. Got two pieces of tape. I'm going to put that right over the eyes so you can still see and make that indentation with your thumbnail so that you can see the basic form of that eye right there. We'll do the same thing on the other side and then we're going to carefully take that X-Acto knife and if you are new to using X-Acto knives or if you are young and you've never used one before um, just make sure you're extremely careful 
the blade is sharp. And for those of you that have been in the game for a while, again, this was a subscriber requested piece of content for newer airbrushers. Good morning, Mike. How's Hello. it going? <clears throat> you just dropped, you just, are they clear or what? Yeah, they're cleared. You want to see them? Can I touch them? Yeah. <clears throat> Nice. Three days later. Folks, you know, I apologize. A couple days have passed since um, I started this. Things came up. Things do. Back to our regularly scheduled video. So all I'm doing is I'm just kind of tracing the indentations for the eye here. We're going to pull these out. Oh, uh, let me see. Here's his thing. Um, so now we are back at this. This is the banger. It is a Guggen bait. One of their cranks, hard baits. And because this is a beginner's, we're going to do something very simple with it. So let's say that you're fishing one of your home ponds. And you don't have any shad in there. So this would not be a realistic. It's beautiful. Um, but it's not a realistic bait for your location. You want to switch that up. So there's a couple of things that you can do. You can either go into a bluegill pattern or you can go into a crappie pattern. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to turn this from a shad into a bluegill. Just move these off to the side. I'm going to be doing these in a later setting. These are for shows coming up. But for the time, we are going to focus on today's Mystery Tackle Box respray. I'm going to turn this from a shad into a bluegill. Most ponds, if, uh, if you're fishing local, have bluegill. Not all ponds in small areas have shad. First step we want, now that our eyes are taped up and the bill is taped off, is to add some white into our chamber. Just a perfect opaque white. Go ahead and completely cover this. I am going to go ahead and cover the top. You can always add glitter back in later if you want to. Probably not necessary. Now, I'm not going to go into whether you're fishing a clear water pond or a dirty stained pond. This is just going to be very general, very basic. It was the number one choice you guys asked for which was how to do basics. Now, I can see that there's a little bit of drippage on the side of this, and you'll get that even, even in factory-made baits. On occasion, I don't know if the camera can pick that up, but a little bit right through there where my shadow is touching um, the bait. There's just a little bit of drippage from where they clear-coated these baits. It's going to happen. It happens to everybody. It happens. It's happened to me. Uh, None of us, even machines, are perfect. Does it affect the swimmability? No. How it moves in the water? No. Do the fish care that there's that little piece of goop on there? Not one bit. As this air dries, we don't have to really necessarily completely heat set every time for the base layers, but I am going to pull this white out of the chamber. We're going to move this over. Always find something to dump your excess solution off. Uh, one of the questions that I get all the time is, do you, why don't you use water to clean it? Um, I have in the past, and I find that I get more clogs and clumps and stuff when I'm just using plain water, and the uh, water doesn't necessarily pull everything off the needle the way this stuff does. This is what I use. It's always in the description. It comes in a bunch of different sizes. Whether you're using, I go through a ton of these, so I get the 32 ounce. Uh, but it also comes in 16, 8, and I believe 2, possibly even 4 ounces. So it comes in a multitude of sizes. You can cut this with water, but this is specifically made. And a lot of say, people say, oh, it's the same thing as Windex. It's a little bit different than Windex. It, it has a property that really 
has a tendency to remove that stuff off. And if water's working for you guys, use water. Um, far be it for me to tell you what to use, but I'm just telling you what works for me. And you can always find all that stuff in the description below. But I find that I have the fewest amount of jams, clogs, clumps, having to clean the needle off all the time. I don't have time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. We've got white on here now, and I'm going to add just a little bit to the top. Where is my red violet? I normally go light to dark. If you've been on this channel for a long time, you know that I normally go from light to dark. I'm just gonna randomly place, because I'm gonna bring light back into it, but I'm randomly gonna place a little bit of red violet, just a basic Createx red violet. Shoot a little bit harder there. In just a couple of spots, almost making a band. Do you see how that works? A red violet is a transparent Createx color, and since this is a basics for basics video for beginners, I'm not gonna get super complex. These are colors that you guys can pick up pretty much anywhere. Hobby Lobby's got them. Blick Art Supplies has got them. Pretty much anywhere where your finer airbrush materials are sold. Um, you can get it and get it at Amazon for these colors. On the bottom, I'm gonna do just a little bit of basic bright yellow. Just a couple of drops into the chamber. And now we're gonna go up. You see I'm kind of going into those pieces that don't have any purple. Get a little bit heavier. I'm shooting right around 30, but I'm just easy on the trigger control. Just push down and barely pull that back to get your fluid to spray out onto that. So we're at three colors. Red violet, bright yellow, fluorescent. This is a sunburst. I'm staying all with Createx here. Barely need any of this. Right here on the throat. Now also on this, let's say you don't have a bunch of stencils. Let's say you don't have any of that. You have no stencils, you have basic colors. You do have a helping hands, which that is in the link in the description below as well. Now, I also get questions about people's bases and these helping hands tipping. This is one that I have purchased off of Amazon. They do sell them at Harbor Freight, but the base is not as heavy. This base is wicked heavy. Um, heavy enough to where it will support a two plus ounce swim bait when I have it hooked into the cradle. So, it's something that you guys might want to consider. They're about $8 a piece, and if you're not doing that many, it's not going to be a hardship to buy a couple of them. Um, you can get the ones at Harbor Freight, they're, they're about half that price, but they are nowhere near as sturdy. So we have three colors. We've got the red violet, we've got the yellow, the bright yellow, transparent, and we have fluorescent. Fluorescent does have some transparent properties to it. It's not a complete opaque, but it's not a complete transparent either. It's somewhere in the middle of that. Going back to, I don't have any stencils. Well, you do have a banger box, right? Banger box that came with this. So here's a little trick that I'm gonna show you. Real easy. Or as Turkla says, easy peasy lemon squeezy. He was not the first to say that, but he says it a lot. So, you don't even have to take the box apart. Into this, we've got a straight edge. Just a simple straight edge. Bring your pressure down.
we're going from, let's see, right around 30. We're gonna bring it down just underneath 20. And I'm gonna load you up. This is one thing, even as a beginner, please go buy yourself some Detail Black Magenta. It is hands down the most frequent detail color I use. It's still my number one. I use it pretty much every day. It's something that I always get. I've got three bottles of it back here. If the camera can see it, those three big bottles, they're all detail black magenta. That's how frequently I use it. So now, going from, I have no stencils, how do I make those gill lines, to I'm gonna use my Guggen Squad banger box and just practice on paper. I always tell you guys to practice on paper. And you'll see it makes that line for you. What you want to try for is aiming more towards hitting the box and letting that overspray form the line. So if you can do that, then you can make this bluegill. Very simple. I like to try and find everyday things. You could probably even use this flashy cardboard, but if you want to resell this bait or you want to give it to your friend, it comes off, your paint's going to come off of this plastic much easier than this foiled cardboard. That's why I'm recommending. Plus, it gives your hand something a little bit more stable to hang on to. Hold and grip this pretty well. So now we're going to go back to our bait. And you never want to go over wet paint that you've just made. And we're going to make four of these. It's nice and easy. Lay that on there. There's one, two. Try and get them equidistant. Three. And this one, I only want you to come up to this little area right here. So we're going to spray right to the line in this gill plate. Or get it as close to that as we can. Okay, maybe come back and touch this one up just a little bit. And now, you'll notice stuff comes right off. I'm gonna go back the other way and complete this. What do I mean by that? So it kind of looks like a crawl, which if you want a crawl, you can do a crawl too. But if you want that thicker bluegill line, then you're gonna come back. Add in your bluegill lines. Can't get much easier than that. And again, clean this off, just wipe it. Come back and do the same thing on the other side. Now this time, we're going to start the other side. We started at the tail on the other side. You always start what's easiest for you. I'm right handed most of the time. So we're going to go to the edge of this cheek line like we did on the other side and try and stay equidistant. And our last one. Wipe this down because you don't want any overspray. It comes right off. Turn your helping hands to where it's a better angle for you. And finish that bluegill line. Now, add just a little bit of depth and darkness, shade around this eye, do the other side as well. Even though we have them taped off, you can still give the outer parts of that a little bit of definition and I want you to go ahead and come over the top with this detail 
black magenta. So now you have your natural bluegill colors, which is that purplish yellow. We're gonna add back in to this a little bit of pearl white, or we could even use white. If you, if you wanna keep it super simple and you only have basic colors, a purple, a yellow, and again, it doesn't have to be these exact colors. Um, I'm trying to get as close, but you could use, if you have a basic transparent set, purple, bright yellow. I do strongly recommend that you do the detail black magenta instead of just black, because it looks a lot more natural. There are very few things that are actual black, except for the dots on crappie, a couple of shad dots here and there. Most of it is a combination of colors and it's more along the lines of this detail black magenta. One of the reasons I use it frequently. But you've got a pretty decent basic bluegill from this sexy shad. I think that was the color. Yep, this was their Guggen sexy shad which is a great color, but if you don't have it in your pond and you're just fishing local and you want to make something that's closer to what you've got, that's my recommendation. Now, something that I have taught before, but if you're making your own stencils, this ear flap will be black. We're not quite ready for that yet, but that's something that absolutely is gonna be black. We're gonna go back to our basic opaque white and I'm gonna kind of mute the yellow in the belly a little bit. Just add a couple of drops into that chamber, not much. Keep it on low spray. I'm also gonna flick just a little bit and get that appearance of maybe a little bit of depth. And I'm just barely flicking this enough to get you guys can get in a little bit closer to that. You can see some of the dots that are coming off of there. That's also helpful if you don't have stencils. Just do some random splatter. Real thin. This is usually a little bit thinner, and I haven't even taken the top off of that to expose the needle. This, this works a little bit better when you do white than black for some reason. But just give yourself a little bit of random splatter and then come back real easy on the trigger because you still want that yellow. But you want a little bit of definition here on the belly because that would be natural. And it also kind of fades your gill lines a little bit there. So just add a little bit of that white on the belly and you're good to go. Maybe just a little bit on the edge of the cheek here and I'll show you why in a second because basic doesn't have to be ugly it can be cool looking I think we're doing a fairly decent job for a basic pattern on this we've used a total of five colors I'll pull this back in it's our color stock so far now I probably don't need anything else in here but I do know that I'm going to be painting these later. So I'm going to pull my pressure back up. I try not to waste anything. So I'm just going to shoot this off. And that way, we'll be set for later. Back to the matter at hand. If you have a thin artist brush, and again, you can pick these up. They, there's a 25 pack at Walmart that I got this out of, and it's just an artist round brush. This is a zero. I normally use double zeros, but since this came out of a $5, 25 piece that I also use, I use some of the flat brushes for clear coating. Um, this is something that you can dip in for white. I'll use the cap of the white later, and you'll see what I'm gonna be doing with that. Well, we are going to add just a little bit of black into this chamber, the true detail black, jet black, or create text black, whatever you have, but use black for the ear flap because that is actually black on the bluegill. What I'm using is Wicked Jet Black 
Again, just a couple drops. I turn my pressure back up to 40. That's blasting way too fast. I get it back down to around 20. I have spent the last three or four years on camera cutting these, but just for the purpose of this, let me show you what it looks like. It's just an oblong shape with an X-Acto knife and a straight edge. That's it. And there's your ear flap. It's good for most crankbait sizes from a 1.0 to a 2.5. Does very well. And for this, we're going to add it to the tip. Now these tips on the Guggen Squad stuff almost looks like that Mega Bass tip. So it has some of the same properties. It doesn't look exactly like it. I don't think they're ripping it off by any means. But it does have that there. So we're going to go to the edge of that. That also gives us a good place to line this up. We're going to make that ear flap. And you notice that it's come right to the tip of that bluegill um, line, that gill stripe. Go to the other side do the exact same thing using the other side, the side that we just sprayed. Go right to the edge. Spray that. And there we go. As I'm adding this cleaner back into my little squeeze bottle. And again, I use these little squeeze bottles because I can shoot it a little bit harder into the chamber to kind of blow out whatever's in there. But we're going to do a couple of things that I wouldn't say per se is basic, but anybody can do it. Just have to have a little bit of patience. And if you want to spray it instead of hand detail it, that's cool too. I'm not going to fault you for that. If you want to just come by and add a little bit of this opaque sky blue to the gill cheek, the bottom of that gill cheek. But for us, I'm going to grab, this is also a basic color that you can get in a set, the sky blue. And I'm going to pull this white. So I'm going to bring this, this, the little paintbrush that we talked about, over to the finishing desk. We're going to do some hand detailing. So pretty much all I'm doing is I'm tipping this bottle over to where I know paint is going to get on the underside of this lid. We're going to do white first and then we're going to come back and do the opaque sky blue. I'm just swirling this a little bit, keeping that tip clean and not globbed. It's real thin, you can see that. And then just ever so slightly, we're going to add a little bit of pressure, get some steady, hand steadying area, put your pinky down there or whatever works for you. And then I'm going to grab just the underside of this ear flap. And now we've made that white that is prominent in most of the sunfish family. I'm going to come back on the other side, use my finger here to steady my hand. I've got pretty steady hands, but they do slip occasionally. I have to go back and correct. And if you do glob too much white underneath, if it looks weird, you can come back and take pen, once this white is dry, we're going to heat set this here in a second, and just make it a little bit better. But we've got our white underneath those ear flaps. We're done with the white now. I'm just going to make a little bit of, kind of, I'm watching the um, St. John's Bassmaster Elite this morning. Today is Saturday morning. I was going to come in here on Sunday, but it's been raining buckets for the last couple of days. So I decided to come in Saturday. I'm the only one here in the shop on Saturday. 
Um, Mike is very kind to his employees and gives everybody off the weekends. Normally, unless we're cramming for shows and stuff, then they're here a lot longer. I'm doing the same thing on the tip of this that I did with the white. Just bringing that paintbrush in, grabbing a little bit of blue. Now, we're actually going to bring this off of here. And if you can just follow the bottom of this gill plate cheek, or gill cheek plate, gill plate, call it what you want. Just add a little bit of detailing to the bottom here. Doesn't have to be a lot. Especially meet the orange. That's kind of key. That really, really pops this bait. And it's not hard to do. You're just kind of dropping this. Just think about how a sewing machine needle goes back and forth all the time. You don't have to be a seamstress. But I'm guessing most of you are not. I'm not. But that's what it equates to. Just Or a tattoo. Tattoo ink going back and forth. And then just drop little, little dots onto this. Now one thing that I will say about the Mystery Tackle Box, actually I have, a, I have a lot of good stuff to say about it. It's like Christmas every month. You can't beat that, right? It's awesome. Or than not having it. And it's a good deal. You usually get about 40 or $50 worth of stuff in the Pro Box for about 25 without tax. One good thing, or one of the many good things, is that Mystery Tackle Box generally gives you stuff that is relevant to the time of year you're fishing, kind of water you fish in your area. They actually do the, they do their homework. They know where they're sending these boxes. Um, some of the boxes, they, and they have various distribution points throughout the United States. So it's tailored to your area for the time of year that you're getting that box. There's no contract. You don't have to subscribe like you do like with Direct TV. You got you're locked into two years with any any phone contract that's a major like Verizon. Two years, not not Mystery Tackle Box. It's month by month. If you want a bass one month, a bass box, and you want a trout the next, do it. All you gotta do is click a different button. One button changes your entire escape of the next month. I've got both in my area. Love bass fishing. Love trout and pan fishing. I can change my box every other month if I want, as long as I do it by the time that they give me. But um, that's pretty much it. I am going to heat set this. But we have a very basic, very cool change up from a shad, which I got the box here. There's tons of shad in Georgia. But if I were fishing a little farm pond, or I were fishing areas that I frequently hit that don't have shad, I might want to change up the crankbaits. Let's say Mr. Tackle Box is the only subscription bass box that I get, that I'm, I'm not near a Cabela's or a Bass Pro or a Tackle Warehouse or any of that. I could always buy from shopcarls.com, online anywhere. But if this is all I'm getting, then I might want to just change it up. So we did that. This is the answer to please paint me a basic. It's very basic. It's very cool. It's an easy change. We're going to do one more thing real quick here and then I'm going to heat set all of this. I'm going to add my name. It's a Uniball Vision Elite Medium Point. I use the fine ones as well. Medium works just as, just as well. Uniball Vision Elite. Put my Jane Hancock on it. This has been your latest spray session from Jekyll Bates. I am Jennifer Cravasi. This is Spray and the Basics and a Mystery Tackle Box repaint for the month of February. 
Thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks so much for being a part of this channel. Think about subscribing if you haven't already. Smash that like button for me. I certainly appreciate the patronage. If you're interested in helping me replenish my supplies so I can continue to bring you cool stuff like this and fresh content every week, multiple uploads a week, please consider being a Patreon subscriber. It will benefit you. Now, there's things in the works. When I get kind of settled in here, I want to do more in-depth stuff for some of my Patreon subscribers because you guys are growing to the point where I really want to address you and thank you. Um, so if you are a Patreon subscriber, look for those things to happen a little bit more in-depth, a little bit more tutorial. Um, things targeted specifically for the folks that are helping me keep the place running, keep the lights on. I will see you on the next video. Cheers and happy casting from Jekyll Bates.